So I have a few opening remarks before I, I, we introduce ourselves. Uh, during this conference, we talked about entrepreneurship. And for us, entrepreneurship it is not only about uh, professional uh, ambition, professional uh, recognition, or professional, uh, it's also about personal and family uh, achievements. And this, in this sense, uh, we saw uh, in organizations uh, the purpose that we achieved and the objective is important and is also creating uh, value to the community as, uh, cre cre as creating wealth, but it's also important to uh, focus on the path, on the way that we achieve the objective. And we feel that we are actors of change, and change doesn't comes when uh, we see uh, our perception of the of the environment changes, and this is the only way to see a, a change in the environment is to change ourselves. Um, I would like to introduce uh, myself. My name is Ibrahim Slawi. I'm 52 years old. I manage a foundry in Morocco, a castings business in steel and iron. Uh, I am uh, founder of the YPO chapter in Morocco. I also am um, uh, uh, president of a local organization that deals with uh, entrepreneurship uh, for youth, uh, helping youth uh, be trained to get jobs, and also part of the board of Injas, and also part uh, president of a local organization that deals with human values within society. Uh, I would say that I had the chance to be a uh, president or to work in this company, Mafode, for 25 years. And uh, today it's a leading company in the Arab world in terms of uh, in the industry of castings. And I would say that our main uh, um, um, the way that we managed to achieve our, our uh, success was through focusing on the uh, three uh, elements in our business, which is uh, delivery time, quality, and price. And today we are able to sell on, uh, on premiums of 25% of our competition because we're able to deliver quality and price. Um, and I would say also that uh, we are uh, working in this company for 25 years has taught me patience and also uh, um, the drive to uh, go through difficult times and overcoming hurdles, barriers. And we can say that we, I, I had to go through uh, crossing deserts for some times and now we, we arrived to uh, recognition because we export to more than 15 countries in Europe, Africa and the Middle East. And this, this is quite unique because we don't have a tradition of uh, uh, this type of industry in Morocco. So I would take the opportunity to introduce Amina and uh, my wife, and she, will, she can uh, introduce herself, herself. Okay, my name is Amina, and uh, I began my career in a, in a bank, and then I, I had my uh, own enterprise in uh, communication. And uh, I met Brahim 25 years ago, and uh, I married him. I actually I asked him to marry me. That was a quality of entrepreneurship. I took some risks, but it worked. So uh, I was very happy. And uh, we began to travel a lot because we, we love traveling. And we went all over the world in very remote areas. And in 92, we went to Costa Rica. And one day, we went to the beach. We rented the bicycles. And I don't know what happened. When I, fell, when I crossed the bridge, I lost my balance. And I fell on a sharp edge of a rock. And I felt instantly the life going on, going, going off. It was really something very weird because I knew it was terrible. I, I knew it was very, uh, uh, that, that it was going to change not only my life, but the, the life of all my family and my friends. And uh, then I, we, I went um, in rehab in, in the United States. I was very lucky to go there. I stayed for two or three months. Then I went to France. 
And I went, when I get back in Morocco, I realized that there was nothing done for disabled people in Morocco. It was like a desert. We even uh, see people in wheelchairs in the streets because uh, they couldn't afford to buy a wheelchair. And uh, I decided to join the, an association. And uh, maybe we can show you a movie, a little movie of two minutes of what we've done in uh, our association. Their names are Youssef, Salma, Atia, and Khadija. They're Moroccan, often from underprivileged backgrounds, and they're disabled. A very enterprising woman put the smile back onto their faces, and she's disabled as well. It all began in 1992 when Aminella Slawi lost the use of her legs, but instead of giving up, she turned her disability into a positive force and joined the Moroccan Association for the Disabled. When I was engaged, I was engaged for real. I didn't even think about it, because it was a need. C'était vital pour moi. Je ne voulais pas rester enfermée dans mon handicap. Je ne voulais pas être un poids pour moi, mon mari, mes enfants, ma famille, pour la société. C'est quelque chose que je n'ai même pas réfléchi. On s'est retrouvés, on a fait clan pour faire évoluer les choses. Et pour montrer qu'une personne handicapée, ben, c'est une personne comme une autre, qui vit avec ses problèmes, ses soucis, ses joies, ses bonheurs, et qui nous montre une chose, c'est d'être intégré. To give the disabled a chance to live a normal life, that's the aim of the association's rehabilitation center here in Casablanca. C'est un hôpital. Donc, vient au centre toute personne qui est handicapée, que ce soit de manière temporaire ou permanente. Ça peut être tout type de handicap, mais c'est des handicaps physiques. La personne arrive ici avec un projet de vie. Il faut qu'elle reconstruise sa vie. Nous, on l'accompagne jusqu'au bout, jusqu'à la réintégration au domicile. Et si possible, après, à travers la MH, pour euh, trouver un travail. A friendly, modern, comfortable center, often in striking contrast with the patient's everyday life. Amina was raised in a privileged environment, yet she's fully aware that, especially in Morocco, a disability can mean hardship for the entire family. On a besoin de beaucoup de choses quand on est handicapé. On a besoin de fauteuils, on a besoin de cannes, on a besoin de rééducation, on a besoin d'aide technique, genre des orthèses ou des prothèses. Et c'est un matériel malheureusement qui coûte très très cher. Amina and the Moroccan Association for the Disabled still have many hurdles to get over. Accessibility to public places, integration in schools and the workplace. There's a lot to be done, but there's no shortage of enthusiasm in the association to get them done. Je crois que notre force à nous, justement, c'est de vivre le moment présent. Parce que quand il vous arrive une claque comme ça, je vous assure que c est, c est, tout, tout change. Cet accident et tout ce que ça va apporter par la suite, ça m'a tellement développé euh, intérieurement. Et ça a tellement changé aussi mon entourage, je, je trouve, dans, dans le bon sens, que je n'ai aucun regret. So when we have built this statue, we had nothing because we were just a bunch of uh, people. And uh, maybe we can show the, the, the slides. Oh. Okay. Uh, I don't know. Maybe. Pourquoi? Parce que Yeah. Okay. Sorry. <laughs> Their names are Youssef, Salma, Atia, and Khadija. They're Moroccan often from underprivileged backgrounds, and they're disabled. A very enterprising woman put the smile back onto their faces, and she's disabled as well. It all began in 1992 when Aminella Raki lost the use of her legs, but instead of giving up, she turned her disability into a positive force and joined the Moroccan Association for the Disabled. When I was engaged, I was engaged for real. I didn't even think about it, because it was a need. It was vital for me. I didn't want to stay in my handicap, I didn't want to be a weight 
pour ma, mon mari, mes enfants, ma famille, pour la société. Je... C'est quelque chose que je n'ai même pas réfléchi. On s'est retrouvés, on a fait clan pour faire évoluer les choses. Et pour montrer qu'une personne handicapée, bah, c'est une personne comme une autre, qui vit avec ses problèmes, ses soucis, ses joies, ses bonheurs, et qui ne demande qu'une chose, c'est d'être intégré. To give the disabled a chance to live a normal life, that's the aim of the association's rehabilitation center here in Casablanca. C'est un hôpital. Donc vient au centre toute personne qui est handicapée, que ce soit de manière temporaire ou permanente. Ça peut être tout type de handicap, mais c'est des handicaps physiques. La personne arrive ici avec un projet de vie. Il faut qu'elle reconstruise sa vie. Nous, on l'accompagne jusqu'au bout, jusqu'à la réintégration au domicile. Et si possible, après, à travers la MH, pour euh, trouver un travail. A friendly, modern, comfortable center, often in striking contrast with the patient's everyday life. Amina was raised in a privileged environment, yet she's fully aware that, especially in Morocco, a disability can mean hardship for the entire family. On a besoin de beaucoup de choses quand on est handicapé. On a besoin de fauteuils, on a besoin de cannes, on a besoin de rééducation, on a besoin d'aide technique, genre des orthèses ou des prothèses. Et c'est un matériel malheureusement qui coûte très très cher. Amina and the Moroccan Association for the Disabled still have many hurdles to get over. Accessibility to public places, integration in schools and the workplace. There's a lot to be done, but there's no shortage of enthusiasm in the association to get them done. Je crois que notre force à nous, justement, c'est de vivre le moment présent. Parce que quand il vous arrive une claque comme ça, je vous assure que c est, c est, tout, tout change. Cet accident et tout ce que ça m'a apporté par la suite, ça m'a tellement développé euh, intérieurement et ça a tellement changé aussi mon entourage, je trouve, dans, dans le bon sens, que je n'ai aucun regret. So I would like just to give a feedback about the circumstances of the accident. And uh, it happened uh, in Costa Rica in about an uh, eight-hour drive in the, in the jungle. And when she fell, I really thought that it was not s something, I mean, uh, dangerous. And uh, finally, uh, I uh, carried her on the bank of the river and I took her in a, in a car to the closest hospital. And uh, I had to wait for about five hours because I called a friend who was in San Jose in the capital. He rescued us by, by, with a small airplane. And at that time, there was an uh, airfield that was under construction. And there was no way that the, the, uh, the plane could land, so they had to land on a banana field. And I remember when arriving next to the field that there was a, a big truck charging bananas. And we had to wait for about one hour before they, they could fill the, the truck. And then we carried her to the, uh, to the uh, uh, hospital in, in San Jose where she had a blood pressure of six. And I had to go to this friend's place and during the whole night I was really expecting the worst. And finally she was uh, flown to uh, Mayo Clinic in, uh, in Minnesota. But what, what we have learned about all this is that uh, when something bad like this arrives, it's for one reason and uh, for some reasons. And uh, I, I, I think that staying calm in a big, uh, when, when you have a big stress like this, can uh, permit you to, to take uh, good decisions. And that's what happened. We were very calm. And uh, so it, it works also with the project. For the center, for example, we had no money and we just wanted to do it because it was really useful for the people. There was no rehab center in Morocco. So we find the money because we, were, we had a goal, we had a passion, and for us it was, it was okay. So we went to see the banks, the insurances, we went to see people, we organized telethons in Morocco. That was the first time. And with our passion and enthusiasm, all the money came. So we built the first center. And then we, now we are building the second one, and we are going on. Even if you put a lot of energy and you are not getting back all the results you are waiting for, it is not a problem. You, you learn to be very patient. You learn to, 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 to manage with what you have. And uh, we are doing a lot of things. We, 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 we are working on education, we are working on laws, we are working on, the, on, um, on training. We are assisting people also psychologically because when you have an handicap, you, handi be, be, be disabled is not only 
what you see, a people in a wheelchair. What is behind is much, much more difficult, is to, you know, to cope with all the, 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 the basic, needs. Ba basic needs. And you have to learn everything again. You know, even for a woman, I was 32 years ago, uh, 32 years old at that time, and I, I was not seeing my, my, myself as a woman. And the, the thing is, I was uh, really afraid to lose my husband, so, and, and to be a burden for my family and for my friends. So what I decided to do is to, 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 to react because I, I, I had no choice. It was reacting or going down. And I, I, didn't, I, I love life very much. And for me, it was uh, impossible to go down. So that's the way you can move on always, always. Life is a lot of challenge. You have a lot of challenge. Life is not always easy. Uh, uh, but, but you can do it. We can do it. It's not, it's not important for what you're living. If you, if you live the moment, pre the present moment, and you accept what, what happens, it's much, much more easier. And I accepted it. And I decided to, do, um, um, to be very strong so, so I can be an example for all the people you can see behind me. And you can see there is a lot of... It's not always easy because there is a lot of suffering. But uh, I, personally, I think that if, if, if um, la douleur, pain, pain is, is in, inevitable, suffering is uh, facultative, okay. and it's, it's an option, and that's what, what you decide. I think also the, what made the, this project a success is it was empowered or initiated by five handicapped people. This is what the birth of the, uh, the small group that initiated this project and they really had a lot of hurdles to overcome, but they managed to, to, to uh, cr create this uh, fabulous project. So, so we, what we really want to, to say is that when you have passion and when you have confidence of you, when you're connected to yourselves, it's much more easy to connect to the others. If you're not connected, it's much more difficult. And what was really paradoxical in my case is that I don't feel two-thirds of my body. And uh, when it happened, I, I said, okay, what, what is this body? I cannot recognize it. It was really weird. But in one way, it allowed me to reconnect with myself. Because at that time, we, you know, it was like a, such a shock that... Um, um, uh, yeah, we go through the development path. I mean, and, and, and we, it was a big, big challenge. And we did it. So uh, I don't know, it's, it's, we can do a parallel with the enterprises. I think no, no, nothing happens by chance. When, when something happens to you, you have to learn the lesson and move forward. And I guess this was the opportunity for both of us to think about what happened to us and how we could best leverage on it and this is uh, a time where you have to question yourself and to see uh, how can you best take advantage of the situation and uh, I remember just uh, after just the, the following day after the accident Amina's father said what are you going to do with your life now she said well I would like to have a child and he thought I was crazy. He said, well, my, my daughter is in very bad shape, and she's uh, speaking about uh, having another child. And uh, in fact, we had two, two, two other kids after the, the accident. So uh, that was also, also part of our program, and we did it. And uh, we are not also only involved in handicap, because uh, um, we are doing a lot of things in Morocco, especially with uh, young people. And uh, we had a program, maybe Prime yeah. Well, we introduced prog stress management programs in uh, all, la all layers of society. And actually, when we, we talk about stress, is really thinking when you're not present, not in the present moment, you're thinking about the past, you have regrets about the past, or you have anxiety about the future. And a lot of the source of violence in society is because people cannot get away with the past. So we help people free, free themselves from the past and, and envision uh, the future in a, in a bright way. And we worked in, uh, in orphanages, in prisons, in prisons and in uh, universities with youth people, underprivileged youth. 
and the, the purpose was really to allow people to get connected and to see that they can make, they can make a difference in their lives as long as they, th they understand they can be empowered, empowered to make a change. And the only way to, to make a change is to change yourself. So we help the youth, to, we give them tools so they can uh, reconnect to the human values such as enthusiasm, optimism, commitment, responsibility. Uh, responsibility, and to understand what generates violence. It's the uh, attitude that, that you use, your attitude that generates violence. And if you can be connected to your mind to see how your thought can generate acts of violence, then you're much more vigilant to prevent uh, violent uh, attitudes. And these techniques are based on uh, yoga. So you have meditation, we have breathing techniques, and we, we, we did it in prison in Morocco, can you imagine? It was crazy because it was, they're all Muslims, we're all Muslim, and uh, bringing yoga and meditation in prison, that was really a strong experience. I think I, I will never forget it because it was so powerful, you cannot imagine. It was incredible. And we also uh, gathered about 45, we did some uh, what we call YLTP, Young Leadership Training Program for Youth, we had two groups of 200 for a, in a 10-day residential program. And then we, get, we took 45 young Moroccans with, that we sent in an ashram in India. And the, you know, the, 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 they thought that they were trying to, to send them for a, to, to, to become Hindus. <laughs> so uh, now we have regular programs and really the, it's a, it's uh, very powerful to see how you can, with simple techniques, how you can release the uh, past from people who are really stuck with the violence, with the education, with the relationship with their, fa their fathers and mothers. So you allow these people and you empower, empower them to, to bring in a change within themselves. Yeah, yes. this is a prison uh, program. Very, very powerful. Incredible. Okay, Asha. Criminals. Yeah. Criminals, but young criminals, under 18 years old. You have some people that have killed here, and, uh, and, and, and some of them were there by error, because there were so many of them that they had to process the their files in a, in a very rapid way. And it's amazing how you can go, come in a, in a cell, and you have this very, very low energy, and in, uh, after three days, you change, you, the energy of the group is completely changed and you have singing and chanting and you have the smiles that come back just with the, with the technique that allows them to, uh, to reconnect and to, to reconnect themselves with the child that they are, that, that they have been and the, to, to, uh, to, re, to view life in a very fresh way and not feeling this, uh, guilt that, that they carry all, always in them. I, I'm, so, I'm sorry, I, I cannot hear. No, I don't think so. Really, I, I, I'm honest. I don't know if, 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 if I didn't have this accident, I don't know if I would have done all this. Yeah, exactly. So I, I think that the key is accept what happens even if it's difficult sometimes, because it's not always easy. And then believe in what you do. And when you have these two things, you can go everywhere and you can, and money comes. Money is not the problem. The wow. things you, you have to, to, to have the energy. And when you have the energy, you can, people follow you. I think so. I, I have maybe, I would like to share a comment because we talk about inspiring. This is the theme of the conference. The first, the first thing we do in life is inspire. The, before we cry, we inspire. The last thing we do in life is expire. And all the life is, rith, is ri, on the rhythm of breath. Inspire and expire. And if we are connected to our breath, then we are connected to the present moment and we are much more aware of what's happening inside of us. So just by bringing this awareness, we can change our perception of the world and we can change the way we act. I think it's so. part of the process. Part of it. 
but you can you know the the thing is you have to 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 be calm inside so to be calm inside you can do sport you can do yoga you can pray you can meditate you have many many tools so you choose a tool that that is okay with you and, and the thing is uh, in terms of performance as uh, as professionals is uh, when you when you're calm in your mind you can take the right decisions if you are confused in your mind then you take the wrong decision and the purpose is really to to bring calmness in you so that you can develop your intuition and your commitment that the decision you're taking is the right one. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you.